I think sometimes there are certain people we just want to be around. We may not even know why. It's just that we feel better about ourselves after being with them. That's kind of what we see in the story of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. We're going to unpack their story today. Stay tuned. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like He's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear His voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus Podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. The Hearing Jesus Podcast is so excited to partner with Compassion International. We believe in Compassion's mission to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. I've seen the impact myself through the letters and the updates that I've received as a sponsor. It's not just changing the lives of children, it's changing entire families, whole communities, always through the local church and always in Jesus' name. When you sponsor a child, you ensure access to quality education, medical checkups, healthy food, clean water, and most importantly, the love of Jesus, delivered through a church in their community because of a generous, caring sponsor like you. And you can speak life, love, and hope to your sponsored child through personal letters that you'll exchange. I hope you'll join me in sponsoring a child through Compassion today. All you have to do is pull out your phone, open up a text, and text hearing Jesus to 83393. You'll get back a text with a picture of a child who is waiting for a sponsor and a link to sponsor that child. You can also go to compassion.com forward slash hearing Jesus to choose a boy or a girl to sponsor. When you sponsor a child, we will send you a copy of She Hears Learning to Listen to Jesus, my Bible study, as a token of our thanks for investing in the life of a child. Thank you for joining me and sponsoring a child through Compassion today. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today we're continuing our devotional Bible study reading of the women of the Old Testament, and we're learning about the Queen of Sheba from 1 Kings. Her story is likely one that you've heard about before, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper into it. And I just want to let you know that if you want to dive a little bit deeper into each of these episodes, there are a couple resources available for you. On our Patreon page, I give journaling prompts for every episode. And the reason for that is it helps me get that information from my head and move it into my heart. Because the whole point of listening to these stories and leaning into these passages of scripture is to help us understand how to live out our faith in our daily lives. And I think journaling, or at least using the journaling questions as discussion prompts within your family can be a really helpful way to do that. We have that, we have contemplative prayer and biblical meditations. We have ad-free episodes, all of that and more starting at just $5 a month. So you can head to the link in the show notes to learn more about that. So today we're in 1 Kings chapter 10, starting at verse 1. It says, when the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions. Arriving at Jerusalem with a very great caravan, with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold, and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe these things until I came and saw them with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told to me. In wisdom and wealth, you have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices, and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Hiram's ships, 
brought gold from Ophir, and from there they brought great cargoes of almagwood and precious stones. The king used the almagwood to make supports for the temple of the Lord and for the royal palace, and to make harps and lyres for the musicians. So much wood has never been imported or since that day. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for, because what he had given her out of his royal bounty. Then she left and returned with her retinue to her own country. So the Queen of Sheba came from southwestern Arabia, basically to see for herself these rumors that she had been hearing about King Solomon. And I want to recognize that that was no easy feat. She likely traveled about 1,200 miles by camel. I think for some reason in my mind, in the past, I maybe pictured her coming by boat or I don't know. But if we think about this, she came in extreme temperatures, 1200 miles by camel. That journey took some time. And it actually, if you compare that to other ways of travel, it took more time than what is required to circle the world in a slow boat. So she was deeply committed to coming and seeing this man. And here's the thing about Queen of Sheba. It is not a normal thing to have a female in leadership and in power at this time period. This is nine centuries before Jesus came on the scene. And she occupied the highest place of leadership as the Queen of Sheba. In that time frame, women in that part of the world had some sort of equal footing as men, even though that wasn't happening in the rest of the world. And so in this kingdom that she's from, it's clear that they're doing things a little bit differently. In addition to that, they have a lot of wealth. She brought 120 talents of gold. That is the equivalent of about $3.6 million in US gold coins. Think about that. Gold coins equaling $3.6 million. So not only did she travel 1,200 miles and it took such a long time, the amount of money that she carried with her, that themselves would have had so many camels carrying that amount of wealth to bring with her as a gift. And just to put that in perspective, the annual income of King Solomon at that time would have been the equivalent of about $20 million. And so... It seems like, even though that seems like a really high amount for us, in the biblical world in that time frame, that was kind of on par with what the expectation was or what the salary, I guess, was. And also, if I'm thinking about this, those kingdoms got that money based off of the tax and the tithe of their citizens. And so it kind of helps you understand even just the population of the places that they're ruling over, how much, how many people that were there. And then we see the two of them basically exchange gifts. And it's one of the earliest examples we have of public relations for businesses, you know, basically business purposes and alliances. It's one of the first times we see that, at least in the biblical record. And so she was a ruler and she was one of many that came from all over the place to learn about Solomon and to learn from Solomon. But she was different, I think, in the amount of stuff that she brought with her. And also with a lot of the other ones, they sent delegations. They didn't come themselves, but the Queen of Sheba, she came herself, which I think is significant. And the scripture says that when she did find out that all of the rumors were true, that all the questions she had for him, he was able to answer. Scripture says she was overwhelmed. And so she left him with a lot of gifts and then she returned to her own country. But you have to think about this for a minute. Why did she take this trip? Why did she travel 1,200 miles taking so long and had to have probably so many camels carrying spices and all the gifts that she brought? Why take such a long journey? Because it wasn't to make a treaty, although they, in some ways that was accomplished because afterwards they had increased trade between the two regions. It was to seek after wisdom. She wanted to gain knowledge from wisdom and she wanted to ask questions. She wanted to see what Solomon's answers were. She clearly had some burning questions on her heart and she sought out the wisest man to answer those questions. He was known as being the wisest man in the Eastern world at the time. Hey 
friends, I wanted to take a minute to share with you about one of our new partners, Five Lakes Coffee. For 20 years, Five Lakes has been helping people discover the magic of fresh roasted coffee. They craft roast in small batches, then ship direct so that you are getting the freshest and best tasting coffee. Five Lakes uses the highest quality specialty grade coffee beans from around the world. And let me tell you, we're kind of coffee snobs in my family and their coffee has converted even my daughter, who is a barista. As a family owned and family friendly company, I love their mission. As believers, our family loves supporting other Christian companies. And one of the things I absolutely love about this company is that they believe in loving their neighbors and they value being good stewards of what God has given them. My two favorites are the signature Five Lakes blend and Chris's blend. Because for Chris's blend, they donate $1 per bag to Forgotten Children's Ministry in Honduras. And guess what? As a podcast listener, you get an exclusive 20% off your first order when you use the code Hearing Jesus, head over to fivelakes.com and experience the joy of fresh roasted goodness today. Again, head to fivelakes.com and use code Hearing Jesus for 20% off your first order. My name's Preston Sprinkle, and I host the Theology in the Raw podcast. Theology in the Raw aims to help believers to think Christianly about theological and cultural issues by engaging in curious conversations with a diverse range of thoughtful people. I have conversations with a wide range of different guests who come from different perspectives, and no topic is off limits. Sexuality, abortion, politics, LGBTQ, warfare, violence, marijuana, immigration, you name it. If you have a theological or cultural issue that you have been wrestling with, with over 1,100 episodes, we've probably talked about it on Theology in the Raw. Along with conversations with various people, I also address questions sent in from my audience every month. And occasionally, I will talk about some of my latest research projects that I'm currently working on. Theology in the Raw is not for everyone. It is uncut, uncensored, and I don't give trigger warnings. So check out Theology in the Raw through your favorite podcast app. I think there, in some ways, there was some curiosity about the Lord because it was well known that Solomon's wisdom was accredited to Yahweh, to the, to the God of the Hebrews. It clearly wasn't money that brought her to come see with him because she obviously had enough of that of her own. It wasn't his wealth that drew her in. Maybe it was the wisdom of how he gained wealth, but it was really essentially his wisdom that brought her to see him. And Jesus said that about her later. It was Solomon's God that made him wise. And she had heard about that, but she didn't quite understand what that meant. And so when she found out it was true, she was overwhelmed. And she might not have even fully realized this herself, but really what she was seeking was an understanding of who God was. I think we're all kind of like that, whether we realize it or not. I think sometimes what happens is we go through great lengths to get it, but even when it's revealed to us, we miss it. There are people that I know that will go on a mission trip with us and they will go halfway across the world or even, you know, almost sometimes completely across the world to get something that they're seeking. And even in the moments where the Lord reveals it to them, they still miss it. I think we are all guilty of that sometimes, but I think my point in saying that is you don't have to go all the way across the world to get the understanding of God. You you don't. You can do it right where you're at right now because we have access to the creator of the universe, the one that gave Solomon wisdom. We have access to communicate with him right now, right where we're at. The other point I want to make is something that she said that reveals where her heart was at. She said, praise be to the Lord, your God, who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. She says the Lord, your God. She talks about how she recognizes that God has given him the place that he's had and the wisdom that he's had and the honor that he's had. But knowing about God is not the same as knowing God. It seems that by the end of this story, she has respect for Solomon. She has respect for God. She even has honor for them, admiration even. 
But it does not say that she came to know him or to accept him. And let's be honest for a minute. As wise as King Solomon was, as wise as anybody that has ever lived is, it's nothing compared to Jesus. We don't have to travel 1,200 miles just to see and hear the wisdom of Jesus. But still, what happens sometimes is people will seek that out and they will learn about him without ever coming to truly know him. They may respect him. They may admire him. They might say, oh yeah, he was a great teacher. But that's not the same as knowing him. It's different than knowing about him. Knowing him is intimately having this relationship with him where we get to know him, the person of who he is. It was the same thing when Jesus walked this earth. There were people that could see him in the flesh and they still refused to believe in him and accept him and know him. They were curious. They wanted to hear what he had to say. They learned about him, but they never knew him. See, Sheba had this love of wisdom and yet all the wisdom in the world, even the most wise person that was alive at the time was not enough to get her into heaven. The same is true for us. It's our surrender to the Lord. It is knowing who he is. And that doesn't mean we have to have it all figured out. Knowing God does not mean we know the entire Bible. Knowing God does not mean that we know everything there is to know about Christianity. Knowing God does not mean we have all the answers and we have everything figured out. In fact, I would argue that it's the opposite. It's knowing that we need him. It's knowing that we don't have it all figured out. It's knowing and admitting that without him, we're nothing. That apart from him, we can do nothing. It's admitting that we can only surrender. And then, of course, there's this process of becoming more like Christ. And honestly, that process is not going to be finished this side of heaven. It's a lifelong process. But what I know is that when I admit, okay, Jesus, without your wisdom, I fail. Without your knowledge, I fail. I need you. I know that without your saving grace, I am desperate because I am a slave to sin. I recognize the need I have for you. So friend, I just want to encourage you to think through, do you know him or do you know about him? And if you are guilty of just knowing about him, I would challenge you to to spend some time in prayer today on your knees, on your face before the Lord and ask him to come into your heart and come into your life and help you to really know who he is and the love he has for you. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the way that you reveal yourself over and over throughout the scriptures and how it is your wisdom that made Solomon so impressive. It was your will for his life. It was your plan. It was your anointing. It was your favor on his life that drew Sheba to him. Lord, help us first of all to be the kind of people that draw others to us because of who you are in us. Lord, may people see you in us and be attracted to that, even if they don't know what it is, so that it's an opportunity for us to share your love with them. And Lord, if we've not gotten to that place, if we have been guilty of knowing about you without truly knowing you, God, would you interrupt our thoughts? Would you interrupt our plans? Would you interrupt our days? And would you make yourself known in a tangible, real way? God, I pray that if we are finding ourselves in that place, that we would surrender our hearts and our lives to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going.